Hello my soccer universe. Yeah, I decided I have to do Serie A now because it's boiling inside of me. I need to get this video out of, out of the way. So sorry, uh, Liga and Eredivisie fans, your video will be the last. But I really need to uh, get the frustration from yesterday evening out of the way. Uh, I have been quite doing well that I did all the other leagues before that, but now I just find myself... I gotta talk about it. Yeah, we have to talk a little bit about what happened in Italy and it was not a good week for Milan fans and so there is no Milan jersey up there, although Milan is always behind there and on the scarves and so on, so there's always the spirit of Milan here. Uh, yeah, as I said, it was not a good week for anything related to Milan and it could have been such a perfect week, albeit it was anything, but... Um, we actually we have to talk about Coppa Italia where we have a second installment coming up soon maybe that's another reason why maybe it's not bad to put this up because we have two fixtures already on the date posts Tuesday um, so Coppa Italia we have Serie A was a so and so round with a top game that uh, yeah only halfway delivered in a way and then uh, actually the, the most of the action was in a way Monday so uh, that's how it at least went so I will say we'll start right, uh, go right into it with Atalanta Venezia in the Coppa Italia, a game uh, that of course Atalanta should win any time. However, uh, Venezia had an equalizer ruled out. They were there, they couldn't then get it, and in the end it is a 2-0 for Atalanta. Uh, in a way, the shocker of the round was Fiorentina's uh, win at Napoli uh, but not so much the at the final score but the way it went was really 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 weird I mean uh, Vlaovic gave them the lead but Mertens could equalize and then uh, Dratkowski sent off for uh, bring bring down player outside of the box with a man down Fiorentina actually take the lead through Birag in the 57th uh, but that was not the end of it Napoli Furiously going, going forward, but Lozano is being sent off. Then Fabian Ruiz is sent off with a yellow red card. And then Petania, with more or less the last kick of the game, equalizes, sends the game to overtime. But now, Napoli is a man down, spent a lot of en en energy, and Fiorentina just waiting to take advantage of that. Uh, Venuti, just before the halftime of the, over the, the overtime period, gives them um, the 3 2 lead. And then Piontek, yeah, Piontek is back. Um, so makes it uh, 4-2 and then Male makes it just before the end 5-2 so pretty big win for Fiorentina kind of confirming that they are one of one of the not if not the most exciting side in Italy at the moment and then Milan against Genoa uh, yes there was no Zlatan you know players at the AFCON blah 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 depleted squad in, in injuries and so on so of course you're gonna give a start to Maldini uh, try to rest a few players for the upcoming fixtures because it's only lowly lowly Genoa uh, with Sheva coming back yeah Sheva uh, back at his beloved Milan um, and I think it was wasn't Sheva's uh, first game in charge also already against Milan one of the first games in charge and now his last game, as it turned out, turns out was also against Milan. Uh, he was, of course, greeted. Milan actually, I thought, started really well, but then you could see Maldini at one point. He had a great, brilliant move, and then he just finished it up. And then nothing. Absolutely nothing. And Odegaard can give Genoa a lead. Uh, and at that point, I really thought that, yeah. That's going to be a tough one. They're going to need to dig deep again. Um, again, the only redeeming factor on the entire Milan team was Tonali. Rebic did not seem quite up for it. Uh, and, you know, Giroud didn't do much, but he didn't also get the service up front. And Maldini is kind of not falling back and getting the balls. In any case, it uh, really, really was a hard time. Uh, uh, to watch but you know the longer the second half went the more I thought yeah they're gonna eventually get the equalizer you bring on Brahim Diaz you bring on uh, Leao and then Giroud from a, a header gets the equalizer and then they shouldn't have gone for the win but it just did not happen then it goes to overtime yeah not so good but Rafa Leao I, he wants to do a cross and it finds his way into the net and then the game was done uh, Salemakas adds a third 
three one win yeah way too much work for getting rid of genuine kind of showing the signs already yeah uh if you play the a lineup and you know if again if you have tonali in there um uh, things can go well uh we have a few as i said we have few few more games of only three games with five more coming up only one Serie B team still left. Uh, the way that the Cop called the Coppa Italia is set up is always a little bit weird. Milan, I think, have to play now the win of me uh, of Lazio against Uden, as far as I know. Uh, but there's not really an outstanding game left. I mean, uh, by name, you with some door, but some door is a mess. Uh, Inter Empoli is not gonna make anything. Uh, so I'm looking almost at Sassuolo Cagliari. So suffice it to say, I will not watch much Coppa Italia action. On to the round um, that happened on the weekend, round 20 to 22. Um, what used to be the Lotito duel goes to Lazio, Torino, win at San Sampdoria. Ah, I have to mention Sheva then got sacked, what we are, or, already said that. Uh, and ahead of Sampdoria, Taversa got sacked for the second time from San, San Sampdoria this season. Yes, because the first time they walked it back and now there's again the power vacuum, whatever. Lazio win at Salentana, Juve tunnel over Udine. With Paolo Di Bala staring down, seemingly there, you know, the contract they have agreed on something, now they're walking it back, blah, blah, blah. Di Bala not happy, staring, staring down Nedved and all the others up uh, there. A big win for Verona, who are statistically had that. That was uh, the biggest win of the teams that I have. I do not have spats here. Talk about that. So, wearing uh, Verona, pretty big, big win for them at Sassolo. Uh, one that I did not necessarily expect. They even had a goal early. This is off an offset when Caprari and Barak had a 2 0 lead. Uh, it got then to 3 1 and um, 3 3 2 and late, late on Barak. Uh, Seals still there, so uh, Barak scoring a hat trick against Sassuolo. Uh, Venezia Empoli 1 1. Venezia kind of trying to get back into, into things. Roma, a uh, very disappointing 1 0 win over Cagliari, I gotta say. But it was all about Atalanta Inter, as I said in the last uh, video. And I think the game. It was not a bad game. It was definitely a nil-nil for the better side because there were many chances. And for every time I thought that Atalanta should, should have taken the lead, then I thought, yeah, and Inter now missed a big chance as well. I had the feeling that Atalanta, uh, they changed a little bit their approach because they had to have um, uh, take many chances, but they actually gave Inter their all. And it kind of, uh, with a little luck, they could have won the, won, won the game on the other side. Inter also had plenty of chances. In the end, the draw probably the all right result. Um, and the winner, everyone said, yeah, the winner, Milan and Napoli. We gotta talk about the robbery at San Siro yesterday. Um, again, uh, when I saw the lineup, I knew Tonali. He got the yellow card against Venezia to not because the next two games against Ju Ju Juven Inter. So, yeah, see, see it out against Space Benzia to not. Uh, Miss there, although, um, yeah, uh, the way that the FK on is going, you might get Benazer and Kessie relatively soon back again, so maybe it was not uh, that ne necessary. Uh, the game, yeah, Milan had control, but you could always see that defensively it didn't look sound, that the midfield was definitely the so and so, but they had their chances. And uh, I'm looking at Ibra. Uh, yes, he gets in position, he takes shots, blah, 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 but. Uh, his finishing is either not good or he found the master in the goalkeeper. Uh, the goalkeeper for uh, space is a uh, space ahead, actually, a pretty good game most of the time. Provedel. Um, but just when I thought it will get nil nil, a penalty is given, and uh, from an absolute uh, blunt defensive blunder from space, uh, space here. And that was the first time that I thought, oh, the referee is not up for, for the test because it was pretty clear. That suddenly Leao is running uh, on to goal and is brought down by Provedel uh, in the box because he was just early before. And then he's giving offsides for what? That was absolutely ridiculous. I think it, it was even a back pass to the goalkeeper. So uh, it cannot even be offside. Fortunately, they look it up at VAR. It took, takes way too long. Penalty given. Then I, I'm already telling my fan family, yeah, uh, don't worry, Ibra, Ibra is going to take, 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 take it, it's not going to be a goal. Theo steps up, and then, yeah, I made too much of a mess out of it, uh, too much uh, pump, pumping up, yeah, penalty, penalty, all of them are watching, I knew at the moment, nah, it's not going to go in. 
Theo misses just by a bit. Fortunately, not long thereafter, a uh, long ball, I think it was from Kronic back there, uh, finds then Leao who can lob the goalie and it's 1-0 for Milan. I was thinking, okay, Milan, we can get the win, we can get the win and take the lead in the table, yes, with a game, game in hand, but then uh, if Inter would win the game in hand, it would only be a two-point uh, uh, back and we have a proper title race. I about the second half, uh, at first Milan was few chances, but then right around the 55th, and it was with Agudelo coming on and Messi, you know, I really felt that they are begging for conceding a goal. And there were like two or three chances for, 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 for Spezia, and then Agudelo uh, makes it 1-1, one, one, and I think, oh, this is going to be really, really hard. However... To the credit, uh, Giroud comes uh, on, Calabria come on, changing again the complexity of the game around the 70th minute. And for that moment, it was all Milan. And not convincing, but at least going forward. And then you thought you had scored the winner. And the referee had blown the whistle before because he, did, he gave a free kick when the ball is going to Messias, who has a free shot on goal. He blows the whistle. The free kick is then nicely taken by Slatan, uh, forced a great, a great save, and from the corner kick from the red save, they hit the crossbar. But you cannot not let uh, let the advantage play out. I mean, it's a refereeing plan that this referee has to be sent to Serie C immediately. I have never seen him, and I hope I'll never see him again. This was an absolute robbery right there, and it's not from Spezia in this case, I mean, I, I was wondering the whole thing, um, that how I have changed my ad, 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 my ad, 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 ad too, because even when, when I was young, I was thinking, can that Spezia just roll over and give us the win that we all know is anyway, gone, 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 why do we pull, 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 pull such a fighter? And I was thinking, actually, Spezia is really giving their all, and it's got to be applauded, but Milan should win. I mean, the fan in me knew that they are definitely, they are the better team, although they did not play great. And then the absolute disaster happens that uh, Giazzi, there's, Milan is so uh, incensed by uh, the not given goal that they get likes in defense and Giazzi scores a win in the 96th minute. True robbery. Uh, maybe Spezia would have deserved the point of that the win was way too much. I actually think that Milan, despite not playing great, I think a draw, I would have moaned. I would have molded Milan for not playing well, uh, but I guess I could have accepted that that, that that loss I cannot accept, especially not that the referee took away the winning goal. If Messias scores that goal, Spezia is not coming back. And so they get a win that was not deserved. And as I say, I call it the robbery at San Siro. I have never, I mean, and there were other decisions going on. That there, it was a dodgy game by the referee and it was all not going Milan's way. In many ways. And then the game in itself did not go the other way. Uh, absolute farce. And so, yeah, um, Milan is uh, still only two points uh, behind, but that is going to be five points soon. And uh, Inter, congratulations to the title, because now you got to win the Derby and we'll see the upcoming game. Um, to finish it out of uh, Napoli got the win of Bologna. The game should have actually played on Sunday, but was then postponed. I don't know exactly why. Uh, with Erwin Lozano scoring two two goals. Yeah, Erwin Lozano, we don't hear much of him these days. And then Fiorentina uh, roll over, Gen uh, over January absolutely big time. Vlaovic even missing a penalty and only scoring one goal. It was actually Piragi scoring going to other, the other goals by Odrezola. Bon 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 Ventura, then Vlahovic, Biragi again, and Torreira, a 6 0 route of Genoa. And remember, a few seasons ago, this was a last day clash where, uh, you know, a draw, both of them could go down, and a draw was just enough to see them through because the other games went their, their way, where you really thought, yeah, actually both would have des uh, deserved to go down. Genoa seemed to be hell bent on going down this season. An absolute mess, and again, I don't want to say much about Sheva because I love Sheva. He couldn't find the turnaround, but he also didn't have the support from, from the owners. New owners and they still fire a coach after two months. Doesn't make any sense to me. But yeah, not my round. Absolutely not my round. The upcoming round hopefully will, will be better. We have one big clash. Milan, Juve, Sunday. 
Mark it down. We have also Lazio Atalanta, which I think uh, could be an interesting uh, one. Uh, other, other than that, I don't think there's really a standout uh, tie there. But the Lazio Atalanta and Milan Juve is a nice course. And Milan better get back back track. Tonali is back, so I actually expect a better performance. But Juve have been doing well. I actually expect kind of a draw out of that one. And Inter winning against Venezia and then Inter increasing the lead again. So yeah, that was it for me, a little bit negative, but yeah, so be it. Please let me know what you thought about the uh, uh, games in Serie A in the midweek and this um, weekend. Give me a thumbs up, enjoyed this video, subscribe to my channel if you want to see more. Hopefully I'm more cheerful next time when we talk about Serie A and Coppa Italia. Up until that, bye! Hey there, I really hope you enjoyed this video and if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you might enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel and hitting the little bell so that you get updated whenever something happens in my soccer universe. And with that, have a wonderful day. Bye!